Welcome back to Baton Rouge, Louisiana. This has been a tight series tonight, the 42nd meeting overall. The home team has won five of the last seven games, and the winner of five of the last seven, or the home game has won the last seven. Five of the last seven have gone on to win the SEC West, and they are usually very, very close. Holly Rowe will work the sidelines for us. Let's check in with her right now. Well, Mike, this crowd is going to love the bigger role that wide receiver Early Doucette will play tonight for LSU. He's scheduled to be much more of the game plan. He's coming back from a severe groin injury that's kept him out for most of the game since September 8th. We went to practice Thursday. He was heavily involved, and Les Miles said it's important because he brings a whole new demeanor to their receiving core. Now, for Auburn, guys, they have suspended wide receiver Robert Dunn. He did not make the trip a violation of practice procedure. Guys, where it really hurts them is in their punt return game. They will have a true freshman back there, Chris Slaughter, receiving punts for the first time ever in a game. I can't think of a more intimidating place to start with your first punt return than right here in Death Valley. And Holly, it's such a big deal because in a game like this, special teams could be the decider. Right, special teams. And, and Robert Dunn was the guy who made the key catch in their win last week at Arkansas, a 30-yard catch and run on their game-winning drive. Auburn has been brilliant on the road under Tommy Tuberville. LSU has been exceptional virtually everywhere, but especially at home under Les Miles. One thing Tommy Tuberville told me to, to keep an eye out for, they might have a few little different wrinkles in their kickoff return. We'll have to wait and see when he feels comfortable with doing something. But uh, both of these coaches know to take some risks and not afraid to gamble a little bit. Tuberville, nine of the last ten games against teams in the top ten. He has won. Crutchfield to kick off. Fannin and Lester are deep for Auburn. <laughs> Taken by one of the up men across the 35 to the 37-yard line. To tell us about the Auburn offense, here's Brandon Cox. Starting in the backfield, we have at fullback, the violinist Paul Stewart. At tight end, some of you might know him from World of Warcraft, Cole Bennett. And at receiver, my go-to guy, Rod Smith. And up front, at left guard, we have Happy Mill, Tyrone Green, and the leader of the guys up front, number 68, Jason Bosley. I think Auburn's going to come out throwing in this ball game to try to loosen up this LSU defense. Brandon Cox has to get rid of the football. He can expect to be hammered by this LSU defense. He has been hammered all year long, for that matter. And to tell us about that LSU defense, here's David Toms. The LSU defense is tougher than the 17th at Sawgrass. The D-line features Glenn, Putt, Dorsey, and Tyson, the Predator Jackson. Our linebacking core is a veteran group anchored by Ali Heisman. Our defensive backs have a couple good ones in Craig, War Daddy Stelts, and Shetta Smooth Dats. David Toms, a longtime member of the PGA Tour and a winner of the PGA Championship, his one major. That pass intended for Rodriguez Smith and Chevis Jackson was right there to knock it away. Yeah, Chevis Jackson read that play very quickly. He saw the short three-step drop by Brandon Cox. He broke on the slant route and was right on it. This is not a, a situation that Auburn wants to be in too much. Third and long. They were 1 of 13 on third downs last week and coming into this game, last in the SEC in third down conversion. Tim Hawthorne is on the field. He is going to replace Dunn as the slot receiver tonight. Cox back to throw. Outstanding protection. Can't find anybody, then gets it to Smith. And if they give him his forward progress, he's going to have the first down at the 47-yard line. Well, you mentioned the protection. And uh, you give a quarterback that's accurate like Brandon Cox this kind of time, and he's going to find guys. It's only a three-man rush. Not nearly enough pressure on Brandon Cox, and he's able to finally find Rod Smith opening up in the middle of that zone defense. Smith with 28 catches this year, and Brandon Cox has overcome a shaky start this year to really start putting up some good numbers, particularly at the end of ball games, He has been lights out when they had to have him. Lester, the tailback. Little running room will pick up five, maybe six. 
behind the block of Carl Stewart. Glenn Dorsey, the All-American, made the tackle. Lester missed more than a third of the season with an injury, and since he's come back, that gives them three really good running backs. Well, and he is a guy that that gives them a different dimension. He's he's good in space. He can make people miss. He's hard to tackle in space, and he's a good receiver. I think we're going to see a lot more of Brad Lester against this LSU defense tonight than we've seen in the last couple weeks. LSU was knocked around by Kentucky in the second half. Gave up more yardage than they had all year. They still have, statistically, the number two defense in the entire country. Lester on the toss. Cuts it back, trying to get to the first down sticks. And just a little bit shy. Had a good block by Tyrone Green and Chaz Ramsey as both guards pulled to the left. And Dorsey comes up limping a little bit. This uh, this defense played 95 plays last week in Lexington. Glenn Dorsey played every defensive snap. And uh, they have an off week next week. They've had a good week of practice. They did take a little time off to rest their legs, but are they going to go full out tonight? Third, less than a yard. Only one wide receiver, two tight ends. Lester. Got a good lead block, but fell. I think he's short. Going well, to depend on the spot because he did Lester. fall down. It's just a matter of where they give the the spot. It looks like from our vantage point in that little yellow line that he barely has it. Stewart was blocking Highsmith, and there is the further injury to Dorsey, who is now down. And you saw him touching his left hamstring. This guy gives 100% every down he plays out there, and it was such a huge bonus as they get the first down on the measurement. Such a huge bonus for him to come back this yeah. year. He was a lock, first-round draft choice. Coming back this year, he may be the overall first draft choice. Well, this was two plays ago. He gets in the gap, and in his pursuit, he reaches for that left hamstring. And he stayed in the game and played one more play and here's the last play as he pushes off. And right away, I mean, he's reaching for his left hamstring. And that seems to be the, the problem for the big guy right now. And that'll bring Al Woods number 97 in on the defensive line in his place to play next to Favorite. Cox, good play fake. Throws to Lester out of the backfield. Lester. Stood up and dies forward on second effort down to the 30 where Highsmith makes the tackle again. Lester's a tough kid. Yes, he is. He's a hard guy to tackle. Very effective in space coming out of the backfield. You know, the last three games now, Auburn has scored on their opening possession. And they've averaged over 12 plays in those possessions, eating up time. Scoring touchdowns and they're into a, a very impressive first drive here. They seem to score in their first possession and their last yeah, possession right. to win the ball game. Lester again. Picking his way through tacklers. And this looks basically like the second half against Kentucky, where they're able to move some of these guys on this great defense out of the wood. And they're doing it just by playing power football. They've got a fullback in the game. He's the lead blocker. Lee Zimba, the freshman right tackle who plays well beyond his years, out leading that play, an outstanding block. And they're very taking it right to the LSU defense. Yes, they are. And it's a very young offensive line, and we have seen them grow by leaps and bounds throughout this season. Tate is in as the new running back to give Lester a breather. Tate got to the 26 and pushed back. Holly Rowe has an update on the All-American Glenn Dorsey. Well, guys, Glenn Dorsey has been laying on his back on the ground, getting his left thigh stretched out. Now he's stretching it on the bench. Guys, I think they're still really trying to determine whether it's a cramp or a pull. He's still wincing in pain. He's going to lay back down and get stretched out again. So right now, they haven't determined if he can return to the game. But, guys, they sure need him. This would be a devastating blow if he's pulled a hamstring. Well, they need him physically, emotionally, his leadership, his presence. That's what they'll miss as much as anything. Tenth play of this drive. Cox throws complete. Once again, Rodriguez Smith 
He went out of bounds right at the sticks, may have gotten just inside it before Curtis Taylor, the safety, took him down. Well, Brandon Cox is an accurate thrower. When he has time and when their running game is good enough to set up their play action, he can really throw the football with accuracy. And right now on this opening drive, Auburn's success running the football is setting everything up for them. And, and that's really, as you look at the turnaround in Auburn's offense the last four weeks, it's been stopping the turnovers and starting to run the ball with effectiveness. Both those things they've done well. They lost early to South Florida and Mississippi State. They come in here on a four-game win streak. Cox under pressure, scrambles. Open throws, end zone, touchdown! Montez Billings got open as Brandon Cox bought time and threw another strike. Well, Montez Billings has really come on the last three or four weeks. Off the hamstring injury earlier, he just finds an open space and moves with his quarterback. But how about Brandon Cox? not known as a scrambler, not known as a mobile quarterback, does just enough to get outside the pocket and find a throwing lane. Al Woods chased him out of the pocket, but Cox able to buy time and find the open receiver. Byron for the point after. An 11-play drive that took 450 off the clock, and they stunned the sellout crowd of more than 92,000 with the opening possession going for a touchdown. And it has been a good anniversary year in regards to football. Seven teams in the BCS standings, 30 and 5 against non conference opposition. And the attendance, exactly what you would expect out of the SEC. Almost 98% stadium capacity. Couple surprising games today. Vanderbilt beating number six, South Carolina. Tennessee getting thumped by Alabama. Flynn trying to scramble, swallowed up as he got to the 37. Got to hand it to the Commodores. Yeah, that's been a program that has come so close so many times to those huge upsets, and that's a big one for them. Yeah, it really is. You know, I got a big win last year over uh, Georgia. It's a big win today over the old ball coach who had never lost to Vanderbilt in his career. Usually he's the guy who's setting the first. Here's the new quarterback, Ryan Perilou. He has a package of plays designated for him. He's a running quarterback. He's a powerful runner, but he's got a great arm as well. 6 3, 227. Gives off on the option handoff that time to Charles Scott, the big running back at 5'11, 226. Jake Ricks made the tackle. And they'll send Flynn back in. Less miles, not a bad record to start with. 28 and yeah. five. Back Best start back. ever by an LSU coach. Back to back, top five finishes, bowl wins in both of his first two years. Flynn changing the play. You see the offensive line trying to get their calls right. Three man rush. Flynn throws. Far sideline, near sideline, rather complete. Boy, nice catch by Brandon LaFell, who has had some problems hanging on to the football this season. The whole receiving core. Yes. Yeah. He's a big, talented guy. Six foot three, 205 pounds. Watch him stretch out, keeps the one foot in bounds, and makes the secure catch on the sideline. Good protection for Matt Flynn, and he's able to wait for LaFell to open up on the sideline. Gerard Powers stumbled a little bit as he tried to come out of the break with LaFell and was a half step behind. Flynn straight back wants a screen, gets it out to Williams. Keelan Williams, 20, 10, touchdown! receiving touchdown of the year. Gary Croton, the offensive coordinator, is a huge screen guy. Will Muschamp knew that. You've got to be ready for their screens, especially against a team that likes to run man coverage like Auburn. They got him on that one. Boy, Keelan Williams showed you some speed, didn't he? 
He's got that fifth gear as he turned it on down the sidelines, and LSU has come back to tie it up at home, 7-7. LSU at home tied up with Auburn number four against number 17 in the first BCS standings released last Sunday. LSU first down Scott to the 34 yard line. Going to run the option. Parallel will keep. Lost the football. Auburn has it. Powers. To the four yard line. And Trendon Holiday saved the touchdown with his track speed. Well, a couple Powers things. just got it from Paralou. Yeah, Paralou does a nice job of reading the option, making the decision to cut up, just doesn't protect the football. It's knocked out by Zach Etheridge, number four. Powers scoops it up, and this is a whale of a play by Trendon Holiday to save the touchdown. At least give your defense a chance to hold him to a field goal attempt after the turnover. He may be the fastest and slowest scholarship player in football. Saved the touchdown at least temporarily. Tate is the tailback. First and goal, Auburn from the three. And the LSU defense has to dig in now. Tate. Wow. Marlon Favre right there to meet him in the hole. Number 99. Looked like there was a little space, but when he slowed up, Favorite just buried it. You know, coming into this season, everybody felt that this defensive front four with Glenn Dorsey coming back for another year and Tyson Jackson on the defensive end would be the best, most dominating front four in college football. And they were that way most of the early part of the season. Last week, I don't think this front four played as well as they're capable of. Well, they've got an opportunity now to really help their cause. Tate cuts it back. Leans in inside the one yard line. It will be third and goal. Well, not only are they experienced and talented, they're huge, especially at the tackle spots. Dorsey's 303. Favorite is 301. The left end, Jackson, is 291. The speed rusher, Pittman, is a great story because he missed two years with injuries. He's at 252. Third and goal. Three tight ends. Fullback Stewart, touchdown! Nice little misdirection type play by Auburn because they put Tommy Trott, the tight end, in motion and stopped him on the left side of the quarterback and then gave it to the fullback on the right side. I think LSU anticipating the play would be coming to their right. And they snuck the fullback over for a touchdown. I think sometimes when you play two quarterbacks, there is less effect on the football team than there is on your fan base because people get divided loyalties and want to see different things. And the problem for Ryan Perilou is, you know, you want to come in the game, you want to make plays, but right. you've got to protect the football. I mean, ball security is the first thing for a quarterback. Here's a replay. Trots on the left. And they slip it to the fullback on the right. Carl Stewart, that's only his 11th carry on the season. And is up and over for the touchdown. Ball just has to cross the plane. It did it very easily. Don't know what the discussion could be. The officials uh, in a group huddled over at around the 15-yard line. Touchdown. The turnovers, the real story for Auburn in their two losses. They were uh, minus seven, I believe, or minus nine, I'm sorry, plus seven in their wins. And that turnover right there, uh, a huge break for the Tigers. The Auburn Tigers, that is. <laughs> That's right. Got a couple sets of cats here. Byram for the point after.
14-7 Auburn. And Auburn setting up for a 22-yard field goal try on fourth and about a yard and a half. Wes Byram has been nearly perfect inside 40 this year. 11 out of 15 overall. He's had two game winners. And that basically a chip shot and he knocks it through. And Auburn has taken a 10-point lead. Let's check in with Holly Rowe. Well, guys, this is kind of a neat story. Uh, this beautiful book has just come out. It never rains in Tiger Stadium. I saw it at Barnes & Noble today, a huge display. And the author, John Ed Bradley, is here. John Ed played here at LSU back in 1979. What do you hope to convey to fans about the experience you had as a player here in Tiger Stadium? I, I hope that I um, captured the magic of, of the stadium, what it's like to play here. It's, uh, it's an amazing experience. You never get over it. It informs your life for the rest of your life. I'm 49 years old and I haven't fully recovered from Tiger Stadium yet. What's it like for you to be back down here on the sidelines now? It's um, you know I, I I would like to have a, a year of eligibility left but I, I I do acknowledge that I would get killed out there. These guys <laughs> are very impressive bigger than than when I was playing. Well the neat thing guys I read an excerpt from the book today and the, the really the beautiful thing that you left me with reading this was that love is having a teammate carry you off the field when you're too tired to walk yourself. Is that how you would best describe it. Absolutely. Um, one of the one of the great things about playing here was was my teammates. I, I never forgot them. You know I think about them all the time wonder where life has taken them and um, cherish the memories of having played with them here. All right. Well, thanks for joining us. You guys can pick that up. It never rains in Tiger Stadium. Barnes and Noble's where I got mine today, guys. Uh, it's terrific read. All right, Holly. Thanks very much. As always, uh, great job with that interview and the research that went into it by getting the book this afternoon. That's great. And this is a special place. I swear, there is no atmosphere quite like it. It's a little quiet right now. Usually, it is loud enough in here so I can't hear the other voices in my head. <laughs> <laughs> it's loud. <laughs> Let's see what LSU does with a minute 33 to go. Two timeouts. You would think they would run their regular offense at this point. Little swing pass. Murphy. Going with great speed across midfield. Let's check in with Reese. All right, Reese, this is the number four team in the country. They're down by 10. Yeah. Nothing surprising this year, is no. it? And, and really, the LSU people shouldn't be too worried at this point because the last time they played here against Florida, they were down by 10 three different times in that ball game before winning. Flynn throws complete. Tolliver makes the catch. Only his fifth grab the entire season. Powers made the tackle. And when you're running a two-minute offense, either at the end of the half or at the end of the game, the first first down is the most important. That first down where they got the swing pass and got across the 50, that opens up the playbook a little bit more for Gary Croton in the LSU offense. As they just go under a minute here, and Matt Flynn has to burn a timeout. They don't have the right people. They don't have the right play. Boy, he was upset, yeah, too. He, he kept motioning to the sideline. Come on, give me something. And they lost 12 seconds on that. And that may be the difference between the college offense and a pro offense where you're just not as smooth. Yeah. Let's take a look at the ESPNU All-State standings review right now. And we mentioned LSU being the number four team in the country. And look at the carnage again in the top ten. People are people who thought they were out of it are alive again. Another just another wild weekend in college football. Oregon trying to hold on down there at the bottom right now against Washington. Ohio State, I mean, they you know they did enough to win. Their their defense is is solid. Offense has done enough to uh, yeah. to win. They've got a tough game next week at Penn State. Oklahoma struggled yeah, against an sure Iowa did. State team that has won once. Yep. And South Carolina and Kentucky go down, so the teams really 8 through 12 or 13 still have a shot to get That's back right. up. Who knows? 
Let's see if number four LSU can make a dent before we go to the half. 54 seconds on the clock. For a big open space in the middle of the Auburn defense with this look right now. Now they drop Etheridge back in. Second and five. They still haven't been able to find Doucette. This pass is tipped and incomplete intended for Tolliver. Couldn't get to it. Well, Auburn also knows that early Doucette is, uh, is a big part of their offense when he's healthy. Uh, they've done a nice job of paying special attention to him in definite pass situations. And I would think on this third and five play, they're going to make Matt Flynn find someone else to throw the football to rather than early do set. Zach Etheridge lining up over him right now. He'll probably have safety help over the top as well. Big third down if they're going to keep this drive alive. Blitz coming. Flynn goes down, and there's the sack that Quentin Groves has been looking for. For several weeks, he has just tied the school record of Gerald Robinson with his 26th sack of his career. The young man's been hurt this year, limited as a pass rusher, but not that time. Nope. Went right around Carnell Stewart, the right tackle, just used a speed rush. Obviously not bothered by those dislocated toes on that play. Watch him on the bottom of the screen. Just goes right around Carnell Stewart, number 71, gets to the quarterback, and Matt Flynn did a nice job of holding on to the football as he was going down. It's his third sack of the year. Well, if he'd been healthy, he'd have, he'd have really put up a number as far as sacks are concerned. That's the side that they thought Auburn could could get some matchups that they were favorable for them against Carnell Stewart the right tackle Lyle hit the right guard. We've seen a couple good plays on that side. And LSU called the timeout as soon as that play was over with 36 seconds. So they gave Auburn a favor really yeah. if uh, something happens on this punt play. Fisher will come in to kick and Auburn not dropping anybody deep. And all Fisher wants to do is just get the ball out of there without anything silly happening. And he does. Booming kick that will make the end zone. 49 yard kick stops the clock with 28 seconds to go. Jeff Gordon second right now in the points. It's Gordon first, Johnson second. That's very good. Yeah. That's very good. You don't spend your whole track on the circuit too. Half mile. It's just like going around. And, and I thought you spent your entire weekend eating. <laughs> You're doing some homework. I'm well rounded. All right. <laughs> Auburn is going to be very comfortable leaving the field right now because they are up on number four LSU 17 to seven and the Auburn Tigers going for their fifth straight win. Let's check in with Holly. Coach Miles, what sense do you get about the fatigue level of your team? You were worried about that triple overtime game. What do you think? I, I think the uh, turnover cost us. I think that turnover cost us. And we, we got to play better with the ball. We keep the ball. We drive the ball. We have an opportunity to make, put some points on the board. It's a much different game. How do you get the offense going here? Shoot, we've, the things that we've done haven't been bad. We just, you know, sputtering. All we got to do is come on and do the things that we plan to do and do well. It started fast in the second half. We'd like to come down and get seven, start the half out. All right, thanks, Coach. Thanks. Welcome back to Baton Rouge on a Saturday night. Let's take a look at the first half stats with the score 17 7. The visiting Auburn Tigers on top, 169 total yards. They ran for 57. Yeah. They held LSU to 40 on the ground. And that, you know that 57 doesn't look like much, but when you consider LSU is the number one rush defense in the conference, giving up only 68 yards yeah. a game, it means a lot. And Brad Lester was a a weapon for Auburn in that first half. Auburn did exactly what they needed to do. They they ran the ball with enough effectiveness to take pressure off Brandon Cox, and they limited the big plays. Only one big play that LSU had in that first half. Is it just me or is Auburn getting better every time we see it? Absolutely. They really are. Their defense continues to play solid and their offense is getting better and better each week. LSU will get the ball to start the third quarter. It's another squib kick taken by one of the up men up at the 31 yard line and that's it. 
Hester, nowhere to go. Just keeps the legs moving and picks up a couple. Let's go to Holly. Well, guys, I spoke with Auburn coach Tommy Tuberville at the half, and he said his biggest concern here is that they are really going to come out and open it up here on this first offensive possession. He said that they really need to expect from LSU some boots, some reverses, and some screens right here. He expects a lot of different things because he said they've been pretty ineffective running the football against us. So he said how we handle this, how we withstand this first drive, we really set the tone. All right, Holly, and Matt Flynn doesn't have the power arm, but he's a guy that's really suited to Gary Croton's short passing game. We'll go to the shotgun on second and long. Draw play to Hester, and Hester oh, didn't boy. stand a chance. Antonio Coleman, number 52, who leads his team in sacks, hit him just as he got the ball. Well, there was some confusion here. He was checking at the line of scrimmage, and I thought this was going to be a read on Antonio Coleman. Here's Coleman right here. He's going to just crash inside. If this is a read by the quarterback, this has to be a pull read. He's got to pull that out of the belly and keep, but there's two guys outside. They had that play very well diagnosed. Antonio Anticipating the run by Flint. That was more like somebody who Boy. can't read. <laughs> well, they had the dive taken care of, and they had the quarterback taken care of on that particular play. Third and ten. Good protection for Flynn deep down the middle for Doucet. In between three defenders. <laughs> Made the catch at the 34. That's what early Doucette can give this team. Well, two deep safeties. The middle of the field is open. Gerard Powers is running underneath in man coverage, but doesn't know where the football is. And Doucette takes in a perfect throw. But watch the protection. Jacob Hester stayed in, helped on Quentin Groves, the sack master for Auburn. That gave Matt Flynn a little extra time to make that deep throw down the middle. Powers, Brock, and McNeil were all there, but early Doucette with his second catch of the day. The first one went for nothing. This one was for 33 yards. Here comes the reverse. On the toss. There is the reverse. Tolliver turns the corner. Big rangy long strider. Great down block. to the 18. Great block by Matt Flynn. He stayed out there and got himself in the right position. Watch Matt Flynn come out here and lead this play. Number 15. He's going to size up his man, and right there, he just gets enough of this block to allow the receiver to get outside and turn it into a big play. Excellent effort by Matt Flynn. Antonio Coleman, number 52, ended up on his backside thanks to the block by the quarterback. That was more than a quarterback <laughs> block, wasn't it? That was. When you knock down a defensive end, you've done your job as a quarterback. Les Miles says, come on, hurry. Play clock's down to six. This is what Tommy Tuberville said to Holly Rowe. He was worried they were going to open it up. They weren't set. They're going to get a five-yard penalty here. Yeah. This is too much trickery. I don't like, you know, you've got momentum. Line up and run a play. And, Le and that's what Les Miles is saying. Les Miles is an old offensive line coach from Michigan. He wants him to get lined up and just take advantage of the momentum and pound the football. You get up there and you're fooling around and you're shifting guys around and then you end up killing your momentum and taking a five yard penalty. Not only a line coach he was a lineman. Yeah. The momentum is so fragile in college football. On the offense. Five yard penalty has been declined. Second down. I just felt that time like they were trying to kind of trick him a little bit. Trick him by formation, maybe outflank him, maybe get him out of position. And that's okay, but when you got him on the ropes a little bit, try to hit him in the mouth. Sometimes it's the right play, but at the wrong time. Yeah. That may have been it. Second and ten, they declined the penalty. They'd rather have the down, so Flynn has to go to the shotgun. Comes back to an inside screen to Tolliver, who faked to go outside, came back inside, said Derek Marks appeared to get a hand on it. Auburn red screen all the way that time. I mean, they felt those linemen release, and they red screen, and that's why said Derek Marks was able to, to get in the way of that one. You know, you have to be a smart defensive lineman to read screen. You have to, you have to determine the fact that you just blew by somebody yeah. with no effort. 
Harrelou in for this critical third down play. Opening drive of the third period. You've moved inside the 20. Third down and 10. You've got your backup quarterback in the game. This is a big call here. And Harrelou, this is a straight keep. Needs to get down to the seven yard line. He's going to be about five yards short. Zach Etheridge up from the safety spot. And that is an odd call, certainly in this situation. Auburn has a four game win streak coming in. LSU is now going to have to go for a field goal. LSU number four in the first BCS standings. They would move up at least a notch if they can win here tonight. This now will be a 29 yard field goal try by Colt David. It was an odd call, was it? A little different. Safe call, but. Colt David knocks it through. The young man out of Grapevine, Texas, 12 out of 17 this year. And it's a one possession ball game here early in the third quarter in Baton Rouge. Glad you could join us. It has been everything we expected from Tiger Stadium in Baton Rouge. Two top 20 teams fighting out for a share of the lead in the SEC West. Both teams acknowledge this is the most physical game they play all year against each other. It didn't matter who we talked to this week, players or coaches. I mean, they all said the same thing. Oh, hands down, this is the most physical game of the year for our team. And that is saying something in this league. Tate. Oh, watch this. The Here's a trick play. Us. Who's got it? It's the cornerback. They call this the globe return. Tommy Tuberville said that he might bring it out. Patrick Lee. Watch what they do. Now, Ben Tate almost messed it up by Bobble. They all five get together. Nobody knows who has the ball. Then they, they get out of there like a cubby of quail. And Pat Lee's the guy that has the football. Now, I, Cubby Aquayo, I think, is accurate because Eddie Grand is the special teams coach for Auburn. He's a huge hunter. So, I mean, that's that's when he described that to me. That's how he described it, like a Cubby Aquayo. Well, they got the ball out to the 40-yard line. Here's Lester on the draw. It takes a lot of guts yeah. to turn your back to a guy who's yeah. got a 40- to 50-yard run at you and stand there. Well, it's all DBs in here. Now watch, they get in there, they turn their back. Who's gonna take it? Who's gonna take it? Hot potato, who's got it? Who's got it? Not Ben Tate. Wow, that, that is kind of a gutsy Ooh. call. But Auburn, the beneficiary with excellent field position on their first possession of the second half. Cox trying to take off and couldn't. Caught from behind Tremaine Jackson from the defensive end spot. And LSU's front wall trying to dial it up a notch. Very few times in this game has LSU had Auburn in definite pass situations. Well, they've got him in one right now. Third and ten. Auburn was four of eight on third downs in the first half. They were the worst team in the league coming into the game, but very manageable third down so far in this game. But right now, third and ten. Watch LSU pin their ears back on this one. Brandon Cox, the senior, facing third and long from the shotgun. Four-man rush. Good protection. Cox throws incomplete, intended for Rodriguez Smith. He couldn't hold it. The coverage pretty good by Chevis Jackson. <laughs> It's a big stop by the LSU defense after the big kickoff return. Excellent field position for Auburn and a three and out for their offense. 92,400 people just got their wake up call. LSU's taking a timeout, an unusual punt formation for Auburn. They'll kick it away. Shoemaker punting to Jones. Driven back inside the 10. Fields in the 8. Makes a couple of guys miss to the 16-yard line. There's a flag down on the play after a return of 8. A beautiful 52-yard punt. And this may cost him about half the distance to the goal line. The flag came out kind of late. I mean, after, well after the initial block, 
But that's what's going to be an illegal block in the back. Let's go to Reese Davis. Reese. You know, that's going to be a remarkable story if Michigan comes back to challenge yeah. for the Big Ten championship. And they're in position to do that. They sure are. Late substitution here for uh, LSU. Matt Flynn's got to give Terrence Tolliver the play. The ball spotted inside the five. And Flynn on the run throws to Doucette across the 20 to the 25. And what a block by Terrence Tolliver, the guy who was late coming onto the field. Matt Flynn had to give him the, the play individually, and he peeled back and got an extra block for Doucette. Doucette's going to come across the formation, the crossing route. Flynn picks him up. Now watch the left of your screen, this block by Tolliver right there on Pat Lee, number 20. That got about 10 more yards for Doucette, and they're out from their own end zone. Well, early Doucette has been much more of a factor here in the second half for LSU. Sure has. Keelan Williams with all that speed is the tailback. This ball's batted down. Good defensive play by the linebacker who got his head, or by the defensive end, Antoine Carter, who got his hands up. The young man out of Fort Lauderdale as he had really gotten penetration. And, and really not a great play by Carnell Stewart, the right tackle, because no. if, if that guy's not going to rush hard and he's going to stand there, then you need to kind of point your helmet somewhere that's going to make him bring his hands down. <laughs> that's right. You don't want to let him just stand there and jump up in the way of your quarterback. You have a specific location in mind? Well, in, in the general area. Williams. Good hard effort up to about the 32, and it's amazing the number of times people throw on first down and get nothing. They're almost always going to run it on yeah. second down. They've used Hester, Williams, Scott, Murphy, none of whom have been particularly effective so far. That Auburn defense has really shut down the running game. This defensive front of Auburn has played so well this year. I mean, Senderic Marks, Pat Sims, and Josh Thompson on the inside have just played beautiful football this season for Auburn. And they've had to do a lot of it without Groves, their most publicized lineman. Flynn throws this one and just off the fingertips of the leaping Terrence Tolliver as he took a shot in the back from Aaron Brock. But Flynn left the pocket a little bit and this ball did sail on him a little bit a little bit too high. Now he got two hands on it but Tolliver also knows there's a shot coming to his back on that play. That, that's one that Matt Flynn has to get down for his receiver. Fisher to kick to slaughter, and the young man still hasn't been able to return a punt. He's filling in for Dunn. Now, well, wait a minute. If this is offsides on Auburn, this could be a first down for LSU. Zach Etheridge came across and made contact, and was he drawn off or was it offsides? This is a first down, a crucial penalty against Auburn. Zach Etheridge. He's going to come right across the line of scrimmage. Here he is right here, number four. He's going to come right across the line of scrimmage and make contact. Now, he moved first, and it caused a movement by LSU, but they got Etheridge for the offsides penalty. And that's an inexcusable mistake. That's a gift for LSU. Sure is. It gives them a new set of downs from their own 37 yard line. Let's this see if they go for four. See if they go for a big play here on first down after that penalty. Hester back in at running back. And Hester will get the carry. It's a some determined kid. Bo Harris brings him down. 
You know, I asked Jacob Hester, you know, what what did Les Miles, I mean, obviously he was recruited by Nick Saban, was here under Nick Saban, and now he's got a new head coach in Les Miles in his third year. What does Les Miles bring to this offense? And you know what, he, he brings a certain toughness to our offense, particularly our running game, and that kind of fits right in with him because he's a it tough, sure hard-nosed player, and he runs the football that way, and uh, it's been a good mix. Flynn with the out to Doucette. Had enough for the first down yardage. They'll mark it up at the 49-yard line. Powers makes the tackle for more on Hester. Here's Holly Rowe. Guys, you've got to love Jacob Hester, but you look at him, he's not your prototypical uh, body style of an SEC running back. He's real short, got the short, squatty legs, but you cannot over underestimate the size of his heart. We talked to the coaching staff, and they said, you know what, this kid is just a football player. If we needed him to play linebacker, he'd do it, and he'd be good. So you've got to really admire his uh, want to and his yeah. spare, guys. Size of his heart and size of his hands. I, I don't know that I've ever shook hands with a, with a running back bigger hands than Jacob Hester. Big, wide, thick hands. That's why he doesn't fumble the football either. Parallel. There's the escapability he brings. Cream just as he unloaded, and it's almost picked off. That was thrown up for grabs. Will Height nearly came down with it. Paraloo just got crunched. Chris Evans got in his grill. Well, this is the Tebow play. Play action to yourself. But there was quick pressure that time by Jake Ricks, number 91, that forced the action, and, and Paraloo got away with one because he kind of threw this one up for grabs. This ball was thrown so late that it was nearly intercepted. And that turnover, Paralu already was, was responsible for one of the turnovers. Here's early Doucette. He's the intended receiver, but they can't get the football to him. Well, Paralu got up and started counting his chicklets just to make sure. Oh, that that. Now they burn another timeout. That's two. Here in the third quarter, they have one left for the rest of the game. So communication from the bench has been a little shaky tonight. What else is due in the SEC? One close game after another. Nine decided by five points or fewer. We might have another one right here. Right now, it is a seven-point ball game. Second and long for Flynn on that little half roll. And complete to the 15, then tipped and intercepted. Holy cow, Patrick Lee ends up with it. Brandon LaFell was so open and had such an easy catch that he just couldn't handle it. He looked it in and then oh. looked it right over his shoulder. Oh. I mean, he's looking it in all the way and then flips it right over his shoulder to Pat Lee. Patrick Lee with his third interception. That would have had them right on the doorstep. Instead, it's Auburn football at the 22. Cox, pressure from behind, throws incomplete hit as he got rid of it. Well, everybody in the building was convinced that he had the ball, including him. My goodness. I mean, I know he's he, you know, he's a he's a young guy who is trying to make it go, and he's had some problems hanging on the football. He's a sophomore out of Houston, Texas. Great skill, great ability, but obviously not great confidence right now catching the football. Well, right now he's got a broken heart too. Mm. LSU hanging on to the number four spot in the BCS poll. Dreams of a national championship are still alive, but not unless they come back to win this one. And wide open is Lester out of the backfield, and after great protection, Brandon Cox found him for 18. It was a play-action pass. They actually faked it to Lester on the counter play, and then Lester's going to be the guy that slips out and down the sideline. Cox finds him late, knows he's going to get hit, and gets a nice pass out there to Brad Lester over on the Auburn sideline for the first down. Cox hangs in there pretty well, doesn't he? Yeah, he sure does. I mean, he knows he's not going to outrun people. His best chance is to wait to the last moment to deliver the football. Lester stays in at tailback. 
one of the best runs they've had tonight. Ball comes out loose, but after he's down. Auburn has done this throughout the season, especially since they started their winning streak. When they get late in the third quarter, as it is now, or in the fourth, they seem to be able to dominate people. Well, their running game has just gotten better. Their defense has played solid. Now they've forced a couple turnovers in the ball game tonight. They're a team that plays with tremendous confidence right now, particularly on the road. Cox, good protection, got it to Smith. Smith, they're going to say he was forced out of bounds. There's also a flag down back at the 38-yard line. Well, there is not a, well, I think it's going to be a holding, first of all, back by the pocket. It's going to bring this play back. Now, there is no force out in college football. So if he doesn't come down on his own in bounds, that wouldn't have been a completion. Does he get down? He did. Catches the ball clearly. Tough to tell from I don't think it's going to matter anyway. No, I think it's I holding either. on Auburn anyway. And he'll bring it back in second and long. Penn wagers our referee. And now they are coming over to the uh, sideline. During the play, we have holding 73 on the offense. Also on the play, the play is under further review. After review, we will determine what the play was, so it would be better to give the penalty options correctly. A very reason, good yeah. explanation and, there. And what Penn Wagers means is they're going to review the play. And if it's ruled an incompletion, then it would either be third and four, or if they take the penalty, it would be second and 14. So they can give the option to LSU. I think they're going to rule that an incompletion yep. upon review. Looked and like then, the right foot hit out of bounds yeah. before the left foot came down. So that would allow LSU to say we'll turn it down and take the play which is an incomplete pass or force him back 10 yards. It, now if it were me and I don't know what Bo Pelini is going to do I would take the penalty and, and play second and 14 rather than get Brandon Cox third down and four. Of course I guess it's really Les Miles decision not Bo Pelini's. <laughs> he works for Les Miles. And there shouldn't be much question about that one. Yeah. It's just amazing to me, though, to watch this Auburn team, and we've seen them a couple weeks, how well they play on the road and just, just the confidence they play with. And, you know, Holly and I were down here when the team buses got here, and they had a huge contingent of Auburn fans, and they do the Tiger Walk on the road as well mm -hmm. as at home and uh, when those guys got off the bus I mean they just they, there's a there's a feel they have for playing on the road that uh, is pretty unique it really is because playing on the road in this league is not easy well you throw some other numbers nine of the last ten teams against the uh, ranked teams right. they've won top ten they've teams, won 24 yep. of 28 SEC games yeah I mean they're winning them everywhere home and away but you're right the yep. the, the really impressive number is the away wins that they have had because home field advantage in this conference right. is so huge. It is. Tommy Tupperville is 4 and 0. The ruling on the field has been reversed. Video evidence shows the pass was incomplete. The receiver came out of bounds. Therefore, it is third down. At this point, we will talk with the captains about the penalty situation. Okay, so the play stand the way it is now is third and four. Now they'll ask LSU, do you want to take the penalty? and make it second and 14 or do you want to take the decline and make it third and four checking with Holly guys the big discussion going on right now Les Miles with the official Chevis Jackson is playing for LSU with a, a shield of face max across his uh, helmet that is not clear he's had a horrible injury to his eyes where some he took a hit in the head blood ran down into his eyes and he has two huge black eyes and his eyes are filled with blood but they're telling him that they don't think that the shield is legal. They just went through a lengthy conversation with Les Miles and the equipment manager. We'll see if they let him continue to play. Looks like they will, guys. You're supposed to only wear a clear, uh, either plastic or uh, unbreakable glass shield under your uh, on your 
the face mask. They do pick the penalty, second and 14. I don't know if there's a medical exemption for that or not. Once again, Montez Billing, who continues to come up bigger and bigger in this passing game. Chevis Jackson makes the tackle for Billings. That's six catches tonight. Here's a guy again, Montez Billings, that barely practiced in August, had a hamstring injury. He had one reception in the first four games. And he has really started to come on. Had five in the win over Arkansas and six now tonight. Now it's third and about one and a half. Lester is back in there as the tailback. Only one wide receiver. Lester has the first down. Well, this guy work. rarely disappoints. That was good work. That was good work on second down by Brandon Cox, not trying to get all 14 yards, just taking the good, strong completion. Third and short, and then Brad Lester finding a little crease, knowing what he needed for the first down and getting that ball past the marker. Brandon Cox checked off on that third down run, ran away from the blitzing linebacker, and they got the first down. Tate gives Lester a breathe, breather as he checks back in at tailback. He'll get the carry and gets slugged for his efforts. Danny McCray, the uh, backup free safety, came in to hit him first. Remember, this Auburn drive is all the result of an interception that should have never been. I mean, you can't fault Matt Flynn for the interception that he threw. Brandon LaFell had the pass, couldn't handle it, flipped it over his shoulder, and, and Pat Lee came up with the football, and Auburn has now crossed the 50-yard line as a result of that turnover. Four minutes to go, third quarter. Auburn leads by a touchdown, bidding for more. Batted down at the line of scrimmage by Tyson Jackson, who played it perfectly, yeah. stood his ground, and timed the jump. Well, you had a, a running back, Ben Tate, going over there trying to block him. Watch 44. He's going to try to block the end, and he's waiting for Tyson to come to rush, and Tyson says, no, I'm going to stay right here and jump up and knock the ball down. Dorsey is down again, and he had somebody roll up on the back of his right knee. First, it was the left hamstring. Mm -hmm. well, that, and, and, mm. and I'm not sure if that was somebody rolling into him or blocking him. Guy is engaged with one player. Yep. He can't be hit by another player. And it looked like he was engaged with Lee Zimba. And Chaz Ramsey, the guard, took out his knees. That, he sure was. That, that shouldn't happen. No, that's... You can't allow that kind of football to be played. That is a dirty play. I mean, you understand that you want to double team him because he, he deserves a double team, but make it a fair double team. Yep. Can't have that. Cox under pressure, trying to scramble. Swallowed up by the rush at the 48. I'm not saying it was intentionally right. a dirty play, but that's the way it ended up. Let's go to Holly. Well, guys, I'll get an update as soon as they have finished evaluating Glenn Dorsey. But just a side note, uh, he is this huge guy, very intense on the football field, but he has got such a beautiful soft side. Yesterday, after their walkthrough, he met a little boy, Prosser Daniel, a little boy with cerebral palsy. He played with him, really enjoyed his time, and uh, Prosser is a huge Dorsey fan. Guys, what makes it even more special is Dorsey himself, as a little boy, had to go for a year in metal braces on his legs, so he totally can relate, and the guys around here say he is so precious with the young boys. It was such a sweet picture, wasn't it, Holly? Look out. Here's the return Look out. by Jones. He dropped the ball. Boy, Chevis Jackson there to fall on it. Alertly for LSU. Fortunate for the Tigers. Ooh. Let's check in with Reese Davis, the sports center, 30 and 30. Trent's going to be all right. Uh, he's a, a fine quarterback and a fine guy. You just don't want to see his long-term health jeopardized. 
Flynn takes over from the 31. Short set and wants the bomb. Bird! 15 down to the 9 yard line. Tackled by Powers. A perfect throw. 58 yards. It was a perfect throw, and it was a throw on first down. He beat Gerard Powers right off the ball. He's got separation, and the ball is thrown perfectly over the outside shoulder. And Bird hangs on this time. He had a drop over the middle in the first half. This time he hangs on for a big play. More big plays in the second half out of the LSU passing game than they've had in, in the last few weeks. A young man they were able to recruit out of Miami, Florida. Hester back in at tailback. The fullback, Jordan. Flynn for the end zone. Doucette can't hold it. Early Doucette with the dive. Got a hand on it. Couldn't bring it in. I tell you what, Cedric Mark's got too much pressure on that, too. I mean, that's a quick three-step drop. Your quarterback should be able to set his feet and make that throw. And Cedric Marks was right in there at the legs of Matt Flynn on that one. A little overthrown for early Doucette, but Doucette can't have his conditioning back, not with a groin injury that's no. kept him out for five weeks. This is really the first week that he's been full speed in practice. It is a first and goal. Auburn showing blitz, and they come. Bird for Doucette, overthrown. Nice coverage by Gerard Powers. Two plays down here in the red zone. Two incomplete passes, and really neither one of them uh, with a great chance of success. And now you're in a definite passing situation with third down. And Will Muschamp is saying, I'm coming after you in this situation. The lead is seven, late third quarter, third and goal. They'll bring three receivers to the right side. Doucette is the wide man. Holiday's in the game. Might be an underneath screen to him. He's the far receiver at the bottom of the screen. Flynn for the end zone. Intended for Tolliver. He couldn't hold it. Patrick Lee with the coverage. It was right in between, actually, Tolliver and Bird as they crossed the three incomplete passes into the end zone. Yeah, yeah, you shouldn't have two guys going to the same spot like that. That something was wrong with the design there or the interpretation there. Matt Flynn was backing up the whole time, kind of threw it to a spot in the back of the end zone, and you should really only have one of those guys getting to that spot. Now Colton David for another chip shot field goal. He's already hit from 29. This is from 26. And he drills it through. Now, when you look at yourself in the mirror and you see that outfit and you still decide to wear it, you are a very courageous person. A couple of proud mothers right yeah. now watching that. <laughs> yeah. If my dad were here, he'd say, you send them to school and you buy them books and they eat the covers. <laughs> I like you, Dad. <laughs> LSU at its own 45. First and 10 down by four. Trying to keep its national championship hopes alive. Flynn to the tight end, Erickson. Excuse me, Dixon. Yeah. Eric Brock went for an interception, number 33. Eric Dixon, Richard Dixon, that's his 14th catch of the year. He's right here. He's going to get into the middle of the field and watch number 33, Eric Brock, go for the interception and not only not get the ball but miss a tackle and enable Dixon to cross up field for more yardage. He goes for the play, misses it, and Dixon able to turn it in for about 10 more yards. A big pass and catch for Matt Flynn. 14th catch of the year for Richard Dixon out of Ocean Springs, Mississippi. Scott, the tailback. They go first and 10 from the 30. Flynn again. Dixon again. Down to the 25-yard line. Gain of five. Let's go to Reese.
Second and five, LSU marching. LSU dominated the third quarter, 183 to 48 yards, but only six points to show for it. Inside handoff to Holiday, the speedster around the corner, breaks a tackle to the five. Showed a little strength, too. We, we know he's got the speed, but he showed a little strength to shake a couple tackles there. Watch five, Holiday. 160. I thought he was going to go down right here by Etheridge. He breaks that tackle, breaks a second tackle by Powers. We saw him make a great defensive play on the fumble return. That was an outstanding run in the reverse. This guy is Mr. Excitement when he touches the football. Averaging nearly 10 yards a touch, whether it's as a return, receiver, or runner. Fastest 100 meters in school history. They say he might be the fastest player in college football. They go to the shotgun. First and goal from the eight. Flynn in trouble. Now he throws over the middle and it's a drop. Doucette had it hit him right in the chest. This was a nice job by Matt Flynn avoiding the quick rush. Now again on a screen, those linemen release and try to get downfield and Matt Flynn had to double clutch on it and still was able to get it in a good position to do set but not able to come up with it. Now they're going to roll the dice again. They've got Paralu coming onto the field on second and goal from the eight. He has certainly committed some huge yeah. situations. I, I, I got to believe he's going to run it here. He just needs to protect the football. Then every time he's come in so far, it hasn't made a huge difference for LSU. Paralu on the keeper, down to the five. You just get the feeling, too, that LSU needs a touchdown. They've moved the ball. They've dominated in yardage. They've got things going in the right direction, got their crowd back in it. But they haven't been able to score a touchdown here. Their last couple of uh, offensive possessions. The yardage really mounting up for LSU here in the second half. Play clock down inside of eight seconds again for Matt Flynn. Critical third down, you're fighting the play clock too. Flynn gets it, play action fake, flag is down, Flynn throws, right to the goal line, no signal, get a touchdown. no signal for a touchdown, but check out the penalty as Hester made the catch, but I think it's coming back. Well, I think it's going to be not enough men on the line of scrimmage or an illegal formation against LSU. Every time Paralu has gone out and Flynn comes back in to run the regular offense, they seem to have had a miscue with getting a play in late or not being able to run the play correctly. No, it's, it's, you know, you bring him in to try to change the tempo. Previous play is on the further review. What's the penalty pen? That's what we need to know here first. Matt Flynn on the naked bootleg does a nice job of getting the ball to Hester. Now, does he get in or not? Reaches the ball for the pylon. Looked like it. It sure looked like it. It was a tremendous effort. You saw the strength. Those big hands weren't going to let go of that football as he reached for the pylon. Now, the penalty is actually more important than the review of the touchdown. I, th I think so. He didn't step out of bounds. He, his knee didn't touch. That's a touchdown. That's a wonderful effort by J Jacob Hester. So the penalty is either against Auburn and it's a touchdown or against LSU and it comes back. So what is the penalty yeah. call? Yeah, we still haven't heard what the penalty call is yet. But it seems like virtually every play that Perilou has yeah. left the field and Flynn's come back in, they have been late getting the play in, and it's really caused them problems. Well, and it was funny because I talked to Tommy Tuberville on the field before the game, and his observation was he thought that it hurt LSU, the two quarterback system. Now, everybody knows Florida won a national championship last year yes, using did. two quarterbacks. Chris Leak was the starter. Tim Tebow came off the bench, gave them a spark, gave them a different change of pace kind of guy. And a lot of teams have tried to do that this year. And I understand Ryan Perlow is a tremendously gifted quarterback. And when Matt Flynn moves on next year, he'll be the guy. 
but I haven't seen the evidence in this game, and this is the only game I've done of LSU, where when he's come in, it's given them a real positive value. He had the one turnover on the fumble. He almost threw an interception when he tried to make a play. Part of the problem, I think, for Ryan Perilou, he, he's very talented, and he's a big play kind of guy, and when you only come in one play here and then you know maybe another play there, you have a tendency as a quarterback to think, okay, this is my shot, man. I got to make a big play. Right. And, and you have a chance. Sometimes you don't just play within yourself or within the play, and you try to make something happen, and you force something. All right, they are still reviewing this play, but the key part of it is what was the penalty? First of all, there is no foul on the play. There we go. There were seven men on the line of scrimmage. The result of the play is a touchdown. It's controlled. That may have just registered on the seismograph again across campus. And I'll tell you what, that man's reaction may have registered as well. Well, the question was whether there were seven men on the line of scrimmage or not. Well, somebody thought there wasn't because he threw the flag. Yeah. There's one receiver and six linemen who are on the line of scrimmage, according to the officials, and a, the touchdown stands for LSU. Colt David for the point after. And fourth-ranked LSU has taken the lead. 20 to 17 over Auburn. The early Doucette has made a difference for LSU tonight. Just his presence has really picked up this passing game for LSU. Huge play here, third and nine. Flynn throws underneath. Doucette broke a tackle. He needed to get inside the 15 for a first down. It's going to be short. If they go for the field goal, it would give them a six-point lead. But you know who is coaching LSU. <laughs> Les Miles says fourth down calls are a feel. Now they're going to kick this one. His feel is let's not kill our momentum. We've been dominating here in the second half. Our defense has settled into the game. Let's extend our lead to six. This would be a 33 yard try for Colt David. Sit from 26, 29, and now 33. A lot was made of Miles making all those fourth down calls against Florida, but those were different circumstances. Not only did he think he needed a score, he didn't want to give Florida the ball back either. To Death Valley. And it's LSU and Auburn fighting for a share of first place in the SEC West Alabama already at 4-1 and, and watching. Yeah. You know, I want to get back to you. You made a great point about why maybe Les Miles goes for the field goal this time and in the Florida game went for the touchdown to keep the ball away from Florida's offense. Right now, I think they feel their defense has Auburn's offense under wraps. First half, Auburn 169 yards of offense, only 54 yards of offense in the second half. So take the points and let let your defense keep doing its thing. Van and Lester are deep. Lester from the three. Crunched at the 17. But Chad, Chad Jones. Jones. He's an athlete now. This is a guy who's a, a freshman, 6'3", 218 pounds out of Baton Rouge Southern Lab High School, was a 13th round baseball draft pick of the Astros, is going to join the baseball team as an outfielder this spring. Very, very talented athletic guy. And they have played some pretty good baseball yes, there. They have. Athletic director Skip Bertman, the former baseball coach, who rang up a series of national championships. Does Auburn have more late game heroics in store? Caught at the 25. Smith made the grab in spite of a dive by Chevis Jackson. Well, he has been tough as a corner yeah. tonight, but Smith is a big time receiver. Yeah, did a great job of going down underneath that ball, shielding Jackson away from the ball with his body. Rod Smith has had kind of a quiet night tonight, but he hasn't had a quiet season for Auburn. Neither has Brandon Cox, especially at this 
stage of the game. He has been spectacular down the stretch during their winning streak. Cox with time throws this one and incomplete. Hawthorne spun around. What did they call it? That's going to be interference. McCray and Stelts were there. Let's see who it's on. The only thing I think it might be is a helmet to helmet hit by Stelts because I don't know that that was interference. Whatever the call is, the crowd doesn't like it already. And that's what it's going to be a personal foul, not interference. I mean, it was great defense and the free safety Stelts coming over to help at the end of the play. Well, oh, yeah, he did hit him up high. Holy the cow. field judge with the penalty in great position. Stelts comes in helmet to helmet right there is the call. Personal foul. Number 16 on the defense. Another seismograph moment as Les Miles unloads, but what a shot by Stelts. Last week, LSU in the loss to Kentucky in triple overtime, 13 penalties for a season high 103 yards. That one, uh, you know, a good physical play, but the right call. The rule is the rule. Cox, another good play, faking a throw to the sideline. The Smith gets it out of bounds at the 40-yard line. There's something about Brandon Cox. The game is on the line. All at once, he becomes Johnny Unitas. Yeah. Everything is right on the money. And that time, they did a great job of baiting Chevis Jackson. He's been breaking hard on the quick routes. They took a quick drop and pump faked, and Chevis Jackson came flying up, and then they threw it right over his head for the completion. It's a good job by Al Board just saying, you know what, this corner is squatting on our short routes too hard. Let's try to uh, loosen them up a little bit. Under seven minutes to go. Lester, big hole. Picks up seven, maybe eight. Here's Holland. Well, guys, offensive coordinators always tell you they want a calm, even-keeled guy under center, a quarterback. And Brandon Cox is certainly that. In fact, we've kind of joked around this season, he's done the starting lineups for us, and he's kind of boring. But when we talked to Brandon after two game-winning drives, guys, in the last three weeks, that's exactly what's helping him win these games. He doesn't get rattled. He doesn't get nervous. And the guys really feed off of how cool and collected he is in the huddle. You know, he reminds me of David Green, who was a great quarterback at Georgia, had a great road record also. And then that demeanor and that coolness under pressure really plays well, especially on the road. Lee Zimba. The right tackle, flags yep. down everywhere. That'll cost him five. You don't really think of Brandon Cox in this regard. This here's the penalty call. Ball start. 73 on the offense. 25 yards. Down main side. But he is number four all-time in passing yards at Auburn. He's only a couple of hundred yards short of Pat Sullivan, who's the most revered guy that ever played there. Well, it's just great to see the way he's turned his season around. I mean, his last year, his senior yep. year, you, you live for that senior year as a player, and uh, it just started out so poorly. Lost two of his first three games, but he has really taken control of his last season and has played well down the stretch. Cox can run if he wants. Gets out of bounds at the 33-yard line. They have to get just inside the 30 for a first down. This could very well be four-down territory. Glenn Dorsey still on the sideline for LSU. All he can do is watch his defensive teammates. Let's go to Holly. Guys, it's just an initial evaluation, but so far it's good news. Glenn Dorsey diagnosed with a sprained right knee, guys, so that, that's a positive. Sprain is better than a tear, isn't it? Third and three. Lester is the tailback. Lester in the flat, wide open. 
Makes one man miss, has a first down and more. That's what Lester Alboard dances did. inside the yeah. 25. That's what Alboard just said about this guy. He is hard to tackle in space. It was a little bit of a delay. He, he, he was a little delayed coming out of the backfield. Brandon Cox knew he was going there with the football. But watch him, he makes one guy miss. He's hard to tackle out in open field. Chevis Jackson is an excellent football player. He got left in the dust right there. Brandon Cox did a nice job of not staring yeah. him down. Look it downfield and then dump it off to the back. Another late game drive by the Auburn Tigers. They have reached the LSU 23. Cox again, blitz coming. Cox with time, throws incomplete, Hawthorne had it knocked away. Curtis Taylor, what a play, got a piece, and it's a little slow to get up. Well, it was a great play by Curtis Taylor, and it was a great play by Chaz Ramsey, the right guard for Auburn, picking up the blitz from the outside. That enabled Cox to even make this throw. The ball was slightly thrown behind the receiver, and Curtis Taylor made a nice play. If you don't get the touchdown here, you would have options with 4.53 to go. Down by two field goals, or are you looking touchdown? Cox, good protection over the middle. Lester, 15, inside the 10 to the 8-yard line, first and goal. Stelts made the saving tackle. Holy cow. Well, this is just a little option route. And watch Lester. He's going to come out and work on the linebacker, Luke Sanders, number 35. He comes back into your screen. He's separated from Luke Sanders. That's a bit of a match mismatch with Brad Lester working against that linebacker. He's got excellent receiving skills, and they have gotten their money's worth out of Brad Lester tonight. That takes a little bit of time to run that pattern. You better have yep. some protection, and he did. 75 yards on the drive. First and goal at the LSU 8. Tate inside the 5, near the 3. What an impressive draw. Oh, this is unbelievable. I mean, they have just, and again, we've seen Auburn in the last couple weeks. And uh, when it matters, when it counts, they have done nothing in the second half. 64 yards of offense in the second half before this drive. If you say to Brandon Cox, this is it. We yeah. win or lose on this drive. This kid takes him down every time so far. And I'll tell you what, having Brad Lester on this team has made a huge difference. He has made big play after big play when they've needed it. Clock running. Cox goes to the shotgun, second and goal from the three. Cox stop feed. Touchdown, Rodriguez Smith! What a throw by Brandon Cox! It was a great throw, and it was a bad decision by Chevis Jackson. Watch 21. He's going to try to go for the interception. He cuts in front, and he leaves the tall receiver in the back. It was a high throw by Brandon Cox. It went over Jackson, and Smith makes the catch. Perfect throw to the corner of the end zone. Hats off to Brandon Cox. Wow. He's done it every time we've seen him this year, and we've seen him a bunch. Byron for the lead. Just. Another lousy night in the SEC. It's 24-23. Auburn over LSU. Holy cow, what a ball game. <laughs> Williams and Holiday, both with great speed, are deep for LSU. A field goal would win the game. They got to get there first, and here is a squib kick taken by one of the. I don't know. Gets it. I don't either. I mean, they've got done it to the all 42, night. and now you have given them yeah. a situation. They go 35 yards. It's a field yeah, goal. Yeah, they've done that all night, and that one was the shortest one. I mean, by now LSU is ready for it, and they and they return it all the way out to the 45 or the 42. And there's certainly plenty of time. Yeah. Even though LSU only has one timeout, they have 313 on the game clock. That was odd. I understand why you don't want to kick to those two blazes. Right. But there are times where you got to do something you may not want to do. Flynn. Now it's his turn to be a hero. 
under pressure. Gets a block downfield, and Flynn picks up almost 10 yards in the Auburn territory at the 47. Quentin Groves got it. I'm going to go back to the Auburn touchdown and show you something. Now, Chevis Jackson is going to make contact with Smith. And now right here, he looks back. So he knows that the quarterback's coming his way. But he's going to make a decision to come underneath it, anticipating Cox won't make a perfect throw. But he does. He threw it just high enough to get over Jackson for the touchdown. Just a beautiful throw to that part of the field. Yeah, that was pretty. It was a beautiful drive, the whole thing. Another run out of bounds at the 42, and Flynn has dodged yeah. pressure two plays in a row. And see, a couple weeks ago, Matt Flynn couldn't do this. After he hurt his ankle in the Virginia Tech game, and it was a significant ankle injury, he didn't have his mobility. When they played too lame, he got sacked six times. Now, he's too mobile of a guy to get sacked six times, but he didn't have that, that yeah. natural mobility. Well, he's got it back now for the first time since early in the season, and he's showing it here on a couple plays, getting away from pressure and turning a negative into a positive. He's run the ball nine times tonight for 31 yards. They've reached the Auburn 42, second and about five. Flynn again, pressure coming, batted down at the line of scrimmage. That one right off the big hands of Senderic March, who came up the middle and then jumped. They are not in field goal range yet. This, you have to believe, is four down territory, especially with only one timeout left. Senderic Marks, number 94, has just played a whale of a game tonight. He gets his hands on the football, knew he couldn't get to the quarterback, got his hands up. How's that for balance? Yeah. He goes over one guy who's on the ground, fights off another block, and then leaps at the right time. He was a tackle last year. They moved him out to end, and he has been a disruptive force for the Auburn defense all year. Third and five, Flynn in the gun. Going to run the option. And they are going to be wow. very close to wow. a first down. Brock made the tackle. Holy cow. This looked like it was going to be for bigger yardage. Matt Flynn reads the option. He's forced to pitch by Antonio Coleman. It looks like he's going to pick up a block to get the first down. But Brock comes up with a huge hit. He got a pretty favorable spot on that play, too. I don't know if it's enough, but he got a good spot. He should be about two lengths of the football oh, short. Yeah. Instead, it is a first down. That is challengeable. That was a favorable spot for LSU because oh, it looked like two thirds of a yard down, yeah. at least. He goes airborne, he comes down. Right there, the ball is down, and then he kind of bounces forward. Mm. Close. Tell you what, that was short. But if they get the snap off, it makes no difference. Flynn on the option again. The pitch back to Murphy with all that speed. Murphy out of bounds at the 35. They are still not within field goal range, at least not a comfortable try for Colt David, who's long this season is 38 yards. And last week in the loss in Lexington, he had a 57-yard attempt at the end of regulation that could have won it. It was long enough, but it was just slightly wide left. He has a very strong leg, but certainly you want to get into a more comfortable situation for a potential game-winning field goal. Ten more yards would give him the try from about 42 yards, which is comfortable for most good kickers. And LSU only with one timeout left because they had to blow a couple of those early in the third quarter. Hester is back in the tailback. He gets the toss. Hester, first down. Tell you what, if it's down in the clutch, that's a guy I want to have the football. I agree with you. He's sure-handed, coming into the night, 230 career carries without a fumble. He's dependable, he's strong, he's fearless. And because they've rotated their backs tonight, he's fresh right now, at this point in the game when you need him to get tough yardage. 
From here, it would be a 42-43 yard try. Flynn again on the option. Almost bent double as he gets to the 23. Every yard you get closer, the better your chances are. The clock continues to run. We mentioned LSU with one timeout. Auburn, as you can see right here with our line, two timeouts. When do they start using their timeouts? Florida won a national championship last year with one loss. LSU lost its first game last week. Their national championship hopes are still alive. They need to score here. The pass underneath caught by the tight end down to the 22-yard line. Dixon made the catch. Brock with the tackle. It would be about 40 on a field goal try from here. And Brock comes up gimpy. Tommy Tuberville is standing out on the field. I think he's trying to decide when to, to use a timeout. It doesn't look like they're going to. It looks like they're going to uh, just count on Colt David not making a field goal or save those timeouts to freeze the kicker instead of trying to stop the clock for his own offense. Third and seven. And Flynn is back to throw for the end zone. say he looks a lot like Matt Damon he played like a star tonight man oh man I've never seen that ever I don't know if my heart could stand to see it again either this crowd is stunned this is the home team and now is going to be reduced to just trying to lateral the ball. They can't do it. LSU has won it on a miracle finish. With so many edges to it. And you might think, well, if Auburn wasn't a 
expecting that. Maybe you just sneak one in, but they were in good position on the play. Yes, they I were. mean, they took a shot at it, and Auburn was right there on coverage, and it just worked for LSU.